Today's podcast is sponsored by Journeys with Josephine. Join Josephine at Lurie for her Rest and Renewal Wellness Retreat, March 3rd through 5th in Sedona, Arizona. If you're feeling stressed, anxious, depleted, and disconnected from your inner light and power, this is a fabulous opportunity to flip the switch on that narrative. The Rest and Renewal Retreat is your opportunity to prioritize your well-being and get your new year started off on the right foot. Stay tuned for a special Black Friday offer later on in this episode. Thanks to Sana Skin Studio for supporting the No Podcast. Sana is a skin studio that is shifting the relationship with your skin and your products through goal-driven facials, real guidance, and clean skincare. Stay tuned for our promo code so you can receive $25 off of your first facial at Sana Skin Studio. Welcome to the No Podcast with me, Nikki Spo. What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of The No with me, Nikki Spo. I'm really happy you're here today. Today's guest, Ceci Gonzalez, is the founder of Theme Dresser in Miami. Her brand believes in empowering women and in the huge role that fashion and personal style play in inspiring confidence, owning your sense of individuality, and stepping into your personal power. Ceci has always been inspired by art, fashion, and her travels. Theme Dresser is a direct product of the styling work she has done, her passions, and the places she has been. It is her thought that everyone deserves a fashion moment. So she searches far and wide for pieces that will reflect her clients' individual styles. That said, Ceci Store's Theme Dresser is a curated boutique which specializes in one-of-a-kind hand-painted hats designed in-house and ethically made in Mexico. Ceci offers the best products and collaborates with emerging designers to curate exclusive collections that are guaranteed to set people apart from the rest. The brand's ethos is aimed to empower women by enhancing their individual style and promoting confidence. This is probably what I love most about Ceci. She gets it. Growing up, I remember relying heavily on fashion and personal style as a form of personal expression, and I loved it. Fashion and style empowered me to feel strong and creative, and to this day, it still does. I'm really excited to chat with Ceci today about the impact that fashion and, quote, dressing up have on a person's confidence and emotional and mental well-being, but mostly confidence. So let's get started with Ceci Gonzalez. Ceci! Welcome. Hi. I'm happy. Yes. I'm so happy and grateful that you're taking the time to be on my show, The No with me, Nikki Spo. So let's jump right in. You seem like a very confident woman. Have you always been that way? Oh, God. No, I have not. So this has been a lot of self work. Um, I'll tell you that in grade school, I was bullied, um, I was very that insecure. Sucks. It totally sucks. Um, But, you know, I feel like they're all life lessons and it teaches you um, to grow. And as I grew older and, um, you know, had got married, had kids, I really I think after having kids is when I really realized the importance of having self-confidence. I feel like it's so tough to be a mom these days. It's so tough to see your body changing. It's so tough to compare yourself to other women and sort of want to be at your best at all times. So um, I think confidence is something that's just really, really important. It's something that I've been working on um, for quite some time. And it's something that I continue working on. I don't think it's something that all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're like, hey, I'm confident. Let me just and like take over the world. It's not. I think it's an everyday sort of uh, work. It's work that you do every day and you just, um, you keep at it. You just have to believe in yourself. And I feel like dressing is such an important part in the way that I exude my confidence. Did you mention that you were bullied in middle school? I was, I was bullied in middle school. Um, the kids would laugh at me cause my teeth were crooked. <laughs> They're still crooked. I did Invisalign, but I gave up with a retainer towards the end Stop. Um, I did it and it re- works really well. You just have to be like super diligent. 
you do. And I'm just no. not great at following. You're like, on. yeah, no. <laughs> I'm like, I suffered for months. Like, isn't it just fixed already? Can't we just move on with life? I feel you. I feel you. Okay. So your teeth were crooked. I don't know if you know this about me, but like I had my ears pulled back because my ears stuck out and I was bullied too over that. Kids are mean. Kids are really mean. Yeah. And I feel like yeah. now it's it's um, been brought to light. Sort of bullying is brought to light. And it wasn't when we were kids. I, I don't I'm 39. I don't know how old you are. But 35. Like 35. we're around the same. So, yeah. It was normal back then. And um, and it definitely took a toll on me. I remember there were like a group of mean girls that had this like notebook and they would write all about the different girls. And I remember- A slam reading, book. Do you guys call book. it a slam book? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember yeah. reading about myself and thinking like, man, I don't want to feel like this about myself because I know that I'm better than this. But you know, you're young and you don't really understand life. And I think as you grow up and um, you sort of realize what's important in life, and you realize how important it is to love yourself. Um, for me, becoming a mom was something that really shifted my focus in every aspect of my life. I feel like I look at life in such a different way now because I want to be the best example for my kids, especially for my daughter. I want to teach her how important it is to be confident so that if she ever is bullied in school or ever feels like you know, she's maybe not being appreciated or feels like a lesser version of herself, I want to be able to provide her with tools um, to cope with that. And um, I want her to believe and be so confident in herself that no one's opinion of her is going to shake her. Now, like when you were in middle school, did you already have a sense of style and like an appreciation for fashion? Always. Since I was a young girl, my family um, worked in fashion. And I remember being 11 or 12 and my grandmother worked at the Merchandise Mart. She had a store on the third floor. And I remember her dressing me in the clothing from the store. They dressed 60 and 70 year old women. So she put me in these 60 and 60 and 70 year old women's outfits. And I remember thinking like, this is so fab. Like I am gonna be such a cool 60 and 70 year old cause I just felt like this was my calling. I felt like I was where exactly where I was supposed to be. I always had a sense of like, well, I think I had a sense of, um... Style. I don't know about style. I had a sense for fashion when I was growing up, you know, like my grandmother also, like she taught me how to sew, right? And my grandmother in Puerto Rico, she would like make me dresses. I will never forget it. One time I went to Puerto Rico to visit my family and she had made me a one shoulder dress. And I was like, I must've been like four or something. And I'm like, abuela, but this only has one shoulder. You forgot the other shoulder. She's like, it's called style, my dear. Right. In Spanish. <laughs> and, but then like, like from there, I always started to like make my own clothes. And I was like the girl on the dance team who like made the costumes. And like, I was the one in charge of bedazzling and doing hair and makeup. And I remember feeling like fashion and artistry in general, like was, was such a, big part of like how I express myself. Like I had pink hair for a time. Like I did the whole punk vibe, whatever, like Bindi's and like Gwen Stefani was my like style icon back then. And she still is in many ways because I still have that in me. So do I. If I was a rich girl, I'm obsessed with her. Yes. So (laughs) so, I'm I'm manifesting like her whole vibe. Totally. (laughs) So, so I remember that being like a, a really nice form of escapism for me from like the things that were going on in my life, you know, whether that was bullying or my home life or whatever, but like that became a really, really powerful tool for self-expression for me. And it sounds like just from what you've shared, like it was for you too, even at a young age. A hundred percent. And I'm a huge advocate for creative outlets. I teach my daughter all the time. Um, if she's, uh, inspired or frustrated, to, um, she uses Procreate on her iPad and it's just a way to doodle and um, just express herself. So from a very young age, I very similarly, I was also designing my own clothes. I remember designing my Halloween outfits. Um, I remember one year I was a, a Girl Scout and I went to the to the surplus army surplus store and I bought a men's shirt and then I had it tailored and turned it into a little dress and I put all the patches And then I made like this little lunch box or or, like a cookie box and I turned it into a little handbag. I added like handles and the cookie box was my handbag. It was this whole like DIY thing, you know, on theme because everything I do, I just like a hundred percent. It totally is fun. How old is your daughter? Well, how old are your kids now? So my son is eight and my daughter's 10. Okay. So yeah, this is like a, this is like a pivotal time for them where they're really coming into like some sort of like sense of identity on, in some capacity and they're heavily influenced by you, right? And their peers. Do you, 
feel like you have ever played down your style? Um, I feel like I played down my style in times where I wasn't at my best. So, you know, I, I went through, um, I've been through sort of pivotal points in my life where I maybe struggled, struggled more than I did at other points in my life. And in those times where I struggled, um, I feel like I wasn't at my best and maybe didn't create, didn't dress uh, based on the way that I was feeling. So now I try to change that. And there's days when I wake up and I'm maybe not at my best. And those are the days that you'll see me throw a blazer on and a pump and show up in like a full suit just to walk into my store. Because I feel like when you dress with intention, then you can enter a room with more confidence because of the way that you're dressed. There's really so much power behind fashion. Fashion is not about an article of clothing that you're wearing because you like the color or you like, you know, you like the style. It really plays such a big part in the way that you're feeling throughout your day. If you leave your house with, you know, an oversized t-shirt and oversized joggers and sneakers, there's no way that you're going to be just as productive or enter a room with the amount of confidence that you would if you were wearing a really sharp tailored suit where you feel like a boss bitch, you know, it's just, there's no comparing one with the other. So it's understanding the impact that fashion has on your life on a daily basis, having fun with it. And that's what I try to teach my clients. I think it's also like dependent on what, like what you do, right? Like, cause now more than ever, we see like fashion brands, like whatever, like Balenciaga, like really glamifying the homeless vibe. Right, like you yeah. made a tra- like they literally made a bag that looks like a trash bag, it's right? Where you carry crazy. around your belongings in it, and so like I, I think there's a shift, and I want your opinion on this, like a shift happening in fashion where like people, like it used to be like being put together meant like you have your a man would have dress shoes and a tailored suit and whatever and a woman would have like a this is what she was wearing the dress and the belt and the handbag and the this and her hair is whatever and now you're seeing like a lot more i think creative expression and whether that's like concert tee and like really fun funky sneakers and boots or like a really colorful outfit that is like maybe a little bit out there. I see, I fall into that category sometimes too. Like I want to be, wear something that's like flamboyant and extra and I get insecure. But I know that when I do that, I, I personally feel like the boss bitch, right? When I'm like stepping into that power of myself. Yeah. Like in terms of productivity, like, I don't know. I have never even tried something like that. I mean, I can tell you from personal experiences, the days that I've walked into meetings, I I had a pop-up. I got divorced last year. And oh, I hosted, thank you. Um, I hosted a designer at my store the day after I was in a 12-hour mediation with my ex-husband. And I had to pull myself together. because She flew in from a different country. And I needed to step up the following day. My eyes were swollen. I had no idea how I was going to get through that day. But I put on like this killer dress that she designed. I threw on like my cool sunnies, which you'll see me like every day on IG. I'm like with a little sunny. And, like, it's my vibe. Um, and you just have to like walk in and own it. You just have to, you have to realize how powerful you are as a human. You have to realize how much, how strong we are as women. Listen, there is nothing like a woman. The reason why I design hats is because of all the different hats that we wear as women. We're bosses, we're moms, we're carpoolers, we're Ubers, we're grocery shoppers, we are supply buyers, we are iron the uniform, we are do the homework, we are coordinating. Emotional support. Emotional support. Throw the big party with the elephants. Like we're all of that, you know? And we still somehow need to find time to be ourselves, do our yoga class, focus on self care, you know, paint our nails and brush our hair. It's a lot. We wear a lot of hats. We really do. So I feel like as women, this is a time for us to realize that we are amazing and we need to walk into spaces and understand that we are capable of handling anything that's thrown at us. And if there's anything that life has taught me, it's been that. Now when something, you know, something happens, I just kind of laugh because I think, man, I've overcome such big obstacles in my life 
that everything else just seems so minor. I totally, I mean, Ceci, I can totally relate to that. And I also used to feel like, like to your point, I used to make such a big deal of, about what I was going to wear, right? Like it's not that serious. Just wear the fucking clothes. Like of wear course. what you want to wear. Of right? course. Like I used to be like, oh, well, what are people going to think about me if I wear this? Am I going to be, look, are people going to think I'm too much? Are they going to think I'm trying too hard? Like, are they, what are people going to think? It's not that serious. How about just like be yourself and take it easy and like you feel good and whatever people think about it, it's really not that serious to your point of like, there are way bigger things in the world. Like, and it's a funny like balance of like fashion and style being so important to a person in terms of expression. And it also at the same time, not being that serious, like not taking yourself too seriously and just like going with the flow and the vibe of what you want to do and step into that. You know, I think it's really all about mindset. The way that I look at fashion is it's sort of my way to connect with my inner child. Yeah. To oh, me, I love that. I'm like a five-year-old that wants to play dress up forever. I love it. You know, so when I wake up in the morning and I, you know, think about my outfit and what colors I'm wearing and what I'm doing for me, I'm playing dress up. I'm putting on those like cute little Barbie, you know, clear plastic shoes. I used to give you the ampollas when you'd walk around the house, you know what I'm talking about? With the cute little dress, you know, that's every day for me. And for me, that keeps me young. It keeps me alive. And I dress for myself. I don't care what other people think. I don't care what's trending. I don't care about, you know, what's the latest like golden goose sneaker that every girl in Miami has. To me, dressing for myself is dressing like no one else dresses. For me, dressing for myself is dressing my individual style and how I feel that day and what I feel is elegant. So my sense of style and fashion is maybe not what everyone else's sense of fashion is, but it makes me happy and I relate to it. I don't know how all of you feel during this holiday season, but it can get so hectic that it's easy to lose oneself in the process. Then after the holidays are over, you end up feeling depleted as you begin the new year. Truth seekers, let's not set this as our vibe for 2023. So how can we stay true to ourselves? Let's prioritize our well-being. Journeys with Josephine has an amazing opportunity for you to hit the pause button so you can reclaim your peace and reignite your inner light. Join Josephine, a certified life and mindfulness coach and author of two fabulous mindfulness books on her rest and renewal retreat in Sedona, Arizona from March 3rd through 5th at the Poco Diablo Resort. This Black Friday weekend until November 29th, she is offering $100 off of the retreat plus a free one-on-one -on -one mindful life coaching session after the retreat valued at $180. That's $280 back in your pocket, people. For more information and to reserve your spot, go to www.seekdharma.com slash journeys with Josephine and enter the code Black Friday. Spots are limited for this exclusive retreat, so snag your spot ASAP and you'll be on your way to restoration, empowerment, and serenity. I want to take a minute to thank our sponsors, Sana Skin Studio. The best way for me to describe Sana is that it feels like coming home. Unlike traditional facials, Sana's facials are rooted in education, and I love this so much. Every experience I've had at Sana has been a chance to learn more about my skin and its needs. I love that the facials are effective while also being accessible enough to be a monthly ritual rather than a yearly splurge. I'm honored to be able to provide our audience with a promo code. Use the code the no glow for $25 off of your first facial at Sana when booking via sanaskinstudio.com. And I think it's really important in a city like Miami, you think about like LA, Miami, New York, like Chicago, all these big cities where there is a lot of social pressure to like fit in, right? With the in crowd and what everybody's wearing when really we just need to be like kind of in yoga, you know, you always say like, keep your eyes on your own mat and do what, do what feels right for you. So I, I actually want to ask you what has been one of your most memorable experiences in your line of work as it pertains to like your clients, because I'm sure you get to like work with so many amazing people and really connect with them on this journey. I'll tell you that one of my favorite experiences is when um, I have a client walk into the store. I don't have a big store. It's really small. And I'm in the process of expanding it, which I'm really, really excited about. Congrats. Um, thank you so much. 
But the current store, it's a really small store. And what I love about it is the fact that it doesn't feel like your everyday boutique. It's really a personalized styling service where I style my clients when they come in. I'll make them a coffee. I have a personal relationship with all my clients. So it's not like, hey, I think this green blazer is cool. You should try it on. It's like, hey, how's your husband doing? How are your kids doing? Let me make you a coffee. Let's talk about life. What's going on? And then we're chatting for 45 minutes and we're playing dress up at the same time. So for me, it's really about connecting with my client. And my ultimate goal is to make sure that that person's leaving my store with a smile and happier than when they entered the store. I want every woman to feel more confident and more empowered when they exit than when they entered. And that's really my end goal. So, you'd say, I mean, you're going to have these experiences all the time. Like, and it seems like that's very true. And I mentioned it in like, when I was, was saying your introduction, it's like, your ethos is empowering women. Like that is your brand is women's empowerment. So what do you feel like your role is in the lives of your clients? Like, right. So you, your store, like you have the role of your store. What do you think your role is in their lives? Like are people calling you and texting you and asking for your feedback? Yes. So I give most of my clients my cell phone, which I know most business owners don't do, but I do it. And I, I'm like a rule breaker. I kind of invent and create my own rules and, and just as you should. Yeah, As you you just do what works for you and what works for your business. So I'll have clients text me a picture when they, you know, they've bought a dress at the store and say that night they're going out to dinner with girlfriends. And I'll tell them like, text me a picture of all the shoes in your closet and your handbags, and then let's style the look for you. So I'll do that virtually with my clients. It's free of charge. It's just something that I do because I want to do it. And also because I want to teach my clients how to, how to style themselves. Like it's one thing to come into the store and to buy this green blazer. Right. But then you take your green blazer home and all of a sudden you're like, Ooh, it looks so cool at the store when Ceci styled it for me. But like, how am I supposed to wear this on a daily basis? So I think the most important thing is knowledge. Knowledge is power. So you want to give your clients knowledge. You want to teach them, Hey, this little blazer, you can wear it with a bodysuit and jeans, but you can also repurpose it and wear it with a little micro dress and sneakers. And then, you know, you're going to Nashville and throw it on with this cool, like long skirt and cowboy boots. And all of a sudden you're Western. So it's like trying to teach them how to, you you don't need 45 blazers in your closet. You really need a select number of core pieces that you can mix and match. It's not about quantity. It's about quality and buying the right pieces pieces that are tailored to your body that fit wonderfully. And I'm a huge advocate for tailoring clothing. Not every every piece is tailored to your body. Every woman's body is totally different. So I have a seamstress around the corner from the store that I work closely with and I take my clients there and we have pieces um, that are catered to their body type. And I think that's also very important in dressing yourself is understanding the importance of having pieces tailored to your body so that you feel the most confident. So I feel like it comes full circle because like you're empowering people by giving them, you know, these ideas for styling themselves and telling them like, you can totally wear this and so on and so forth. But then you're also empowering them in the sense to like go home and be able to do it themselves. It's like that saying of like you, if you give a man a fish, he eats the fish and then, but if you teach him how to fish, then he can eat for his whole life. You know, it's like you're empowering women to like really step into a space where they feel capable and that the opportunities are then limitless because they have it within them. It's, you're just revealing more of what's already inside of them. A hundred percent. And then the most beautiful thing is that then these women go out, they're wearing their pieces, they're confident. And now best friend Mary is like, hey, you look amazing. You're like radiant. Where's your outfit from? It's from Theme Dresser. And to me, that's the best referral is someone saying, man, I got my outfit at Theme Dresser. Ceci helped me. I, you know, I love going in there. We have so much fun playing dress up. And now someone else comes into the store because their girlfriend just referred them. To me, that's the absolute best referral. Absolutely. So Ceci, what are some of the obstacles that you've had to face when building your business? I would say that the biggest obstacle that I've had to face has been staffing. Oh, wow. Yeah. I hear that so much. It's, it's really difficult in retail. It's really difficult in e It's really difficult when you're a Google-built business. My business is completely Google-built. I never went to, you know, I studied business and marketing and minored in economics and retail merchandising, but I never went to school on like, how do you open your own fashion label? How do you manufacture outside of the United States and deal with like import taxes? I've never had to deal with any of that. It's all been Google built. So I feel like in hiring, um, it's become very difficult because you want to, you know, it's your baby first. 
right? So you want to take care of your baby. And then, you know, the turnaround is just, it's very quick because girls, um, I, I don't know what it is with retail and turnaround, but I guess at some point you want something else. You want more. And there's only so much capacity that you can provide someone with. So for me, that's been the biggest challenge. I actually, on my list of things to do today, I'm going to books and books and buying a management book. I feel like you always need to work on yourself in business, in life, personal. It's just, you're like a work in progress. First of all, mad respect because you actually like just said that, you know what I mean? You owned it. You're like, hold on. I need a management. Like I need to go read up on this subject. Like, you know how many people just pretend like they have it all together? Like, oh no, there's so much beauty in owning your shit. You know what I mean? Totally. So how, I mean, so have you been able to overcome these issues? You know, I'll tell you that my best coping mechanism has been um, focusing on myself. I feel like when I focus inward, I'm the best version of myself. When I go to my breathwork classes that I go to every Tuesday, I meditate, um, I listen to Sambo healing, I do yoga classes, I speak to my therapist, I... um, do beach days by myself. I got a beach club membership. And my one of my favorite things to do is seclude myself. I don't talk to anyone. I put my ear pods. I have my little self-help book, fashion book, inspo book, laptop. I work, whatever. But I need to be close to the water. And I feel like for me, it's calming. So I think that it's learning what works for you, what works for your body, what works for your soul, and what recharges you. When you're doing too much, it's important to stop, um, take care of yourself so that you have the energy to sort of, you know, wear all the different hats. How has um, social media impacted, not your business, how has social media impacted your creativity? So for me, social media is a huge form of creativity. I run my social media. Um, I've never outsourced social. And for me, it's one of the things that I love working on because it's creative. My creative spark uh, happens around midnight between midnight and 3 a.m. is my creative time. My body loves to like, Hey, you're tired, but who needs sleep when you have content to run? So, you know, I'll run content. (laughs) I'll create like a reel for the following day. I'll, you know, come up with content or like a cool caption for me. That's all creative. And I love it. I, I save memes and captions and I'm like, one day I'm going to use this one meme and it's, you know, it's going to be great. Um, the other day I posted like a meme that said something like, so I do this little like post, what's your favorite? He asked me, what's your favorite sign? And then I'm standing behind like a painted wall in Wynwood with like a dollar sign. And it's, a, and the answers I said dollar. So it's like a guy's asking you what's your favorite sign and your answer is dollar. Like, I'm just trying to make the money, honey. Like, I'm just trying to like provide for my kids. I'm just trying to like be independent. I'm trying to live on my own without having to worry about anyone providing for me. There is power in financial freedom. Yes, there is. And more women need to be talking about that. You know what I mean? Like, because I know there's a whole school of people like, oh, there's another girl who likes the dollar. It's like, yeah, who doesn't want to have freedom of choice? Of course. Listen, the dollar is symbolic of opportunity. In March, I was able to take my daughter to Paris for five days on my own. Amazing. To me, that was the most empowering feeling in the entire world because I'm giving my daughter an experience that I never had. I never saw snow until I was in college and paid my way to see snow. I never went to Europe till I paid my way to Europe. You know, I never had those opportunities as a kid. So for me, if I'm able to provide these opportunities to my kids and I can share these experiences with them because I have the money to do it, then 100 percent. I'm going to be here wearing my green. I'm going to be posting my dollar signs and I'm going to say, you know what? At the end of the day, it's going to help my kids and my family. Okay, but I'm really happy, Ceci, that you said that social media has done a lot for your creativity because I feel like I feel like social gets a bad rep, you know, like. Uh, quit quit scrolling, blah, blah, you know, whatever. Yes, yes, yes. Like we don't want to like get to a space where we're all we're doing is looking outward and feeling envy and feeling like not good enough, right? Like totally, I, I'm with that. But it's like having a mood board at your fingertips for inspiration at all times. A hundred percent. I get so much f- parenting advice on, on social, you know, like self-help stuff, following therapists, following – all sorts of individuals that I'm like, you know what? That resonates with me. That resonates with me. That resonates with me. And then I can take that into my own world and my personal world and my external world. 
and embody that. And like, it's a tool for me to like rediscover what makes me tick and what, the, what I like, you know? And, and so, yeah, I really do feel like it's, um, it's a mood board that's at your fingertips. And I'm really, I really love that you feel that way because I think that it can be to kind of taboo sometimes, like this whole social media thing. And I just, you know, it's so funny. I just did um, an episode about like who is influencing you and like the role of an influencer in your life mm-hmm. and how like you, most people, you hear the word influencer and you're like, ah, another influencer online, right. whatever. But it's kind of like, yeah, like there are people of influence on the internet that are affecting me in in negative ways, but also like really positive, uplifting empowering ways. You know what I mean? That like you would never have had access to if it wasn't. A hundred percent. I think that you need to filter your social media so that you're only following accounts that bring out sort of a positive, uh, positive energy in you where you feel like somehow you're gaining something from following that account. If you're following accounts that make you feel smaller or make you feel insecure or make you feel a certain way about yourself that's that has some kind of negative connotation you should unfollow that account oh my gosh i've been an unfollowing queen lately i'm like nope not my shit nope not for me uh no thank you because you know like i'm here to feel good obviously there's going to be things that don't make us feel good but i'm like i'm here to feel empowered i'm not here to feel like my biggest thing and something that i struggle with is envy right like right now like i'm pregnant I am not feeling like the most fashionable, right? I'm like, yeah, you know, if I wasn't pregnant, maybe if it wasn't a hundred degrees in Miami right now, maybe. So I, I, I get in this set, like mindset sometimes where I'm like, I just have to be really selective. I'm like, if I'm not in a space to see like the Instagram model who gets to wear a pair of jeans and a tank top because anything looks good right now, I, I'm not going to look at it. I'm going to look at the things like that empower me to feel beautiful and whole and at peace and really just good, like good from the inside. And right now for me, that looks like a lot of like spiritual stuff that I'm following, you know, and you go through phases too. I don't know about you, but it's like the the ebbs and flows of life, right? Um, it's, it's funny that you mentioned the who's influencing you and that we're talking about the whole social media and, and how important social media is. It's something that I struggled with, um, whether or not to put myself as sort of the main character in my business. And ultimately, I came back to the point that for me, I'm 39, I'm a mom of two, I am divorced, um, and I'm a business owner. So for me, my demographic, my clientele is between the ages of 35 and 50 moms, for the most part, um, some of which are married, some of which are divorced, that's neither here nor there. But my demographic is basically me. So what I'm trying to show women is I'm also 39. I also have two kids, but I made a huge life change five years ago when I decided to stop drinking. I decided to take care of my body, my mind, my soul. And now I'm this sort of sassy 2.0 version of myself because I've done the work and I'm still doing the work and I continue to do the work. But it's to show people that you can really achieve your dreams at 35. You can chase your dreams at 35. It doesn't have to be before you have kids. You know, you can still have two kids, you can still juggle life, and you can still go after your dreams and chase your dreams. And I'm proof of that. So for me, I always go back to let me be the the kind of the face of the brand because I want people to not only look at the fashion side of it, but also to feel empowered in the message behind the brand. Um, hashtag main character energy. <laughs> I'm, I like wrote that down. I'm like, it might be the title of the episode, main yes. character energy through style and fashion with Ceci Gonzalez. <laughs> I mean, I'm here for the main character energy, Ceci. And like, I love, love, love your vibes. Oh, so, you too, babe. so why is this work so important to you? Like, that's like the million dollar question, right? Like, why is this so important to you? Honestly, Nikki, uh, this is my calling. There's no other way that I can put this in words for you. This is what I was meant to do. I come alive in fashion. I come alive when I do my little outfit of the day videos. It's like a whole other version of me. I get to play this part in this dream world that I've somehow manifested this house that I live in, this store that I've created, this brand, these amazing women that work so closely with me. You know, you talked about like 
Xing accounts, I've Xed people from my life. And as I've Xed people that are negative in my life, it's made space for people that are positive. So now I'm surrounded by all these women who are bosses, who are, you know, um, energy healers, who are, you know, divorced uh, mom, you know, divorced moms who are helping me cope through life. And I feel like if you kind of make space for the universe to provide you with gifts, and you're open to it and you work towards it, then it's incredible what you're able to manifest. Amen to you, Sassy. You're pure magic. And I think that you serve as an inspiration, not like, you know, not just for people who are like interested in fashion and style, but like the fact that you, you ended by saying that you were called to do this. And I think that that's something that everybody wants to feel the feeling that you are doing what you are called to be doing. I think it's hugely, hugely powerful. Thank so. you, baby. And I feel like you're doing the exact same thing. You're definitely you. in I'm your trying. life. Thank you so much, Ceci. Um, I'm so grateful that we got to chat. I love everything that we've talked about. I feel like it's super inspiring and empowering, and I can't wait for everybody to hear this message. Thank you. Same. Thank you so much for sharing my story and for having me on today. As we head full speed ahead into the holidays, don't forget to put yourself on that gift list too. Book a spot at the Rest and Renewal Retreat March 3rd through 5th in Sedona, Arizona with certified life and mindfulness coach and author Josephine Atluri. Remember, by taking care of yourself first, you can end up taking better care of those around you. Give yourself the permission to access the rest and renewal you deserve by using the code Black Friday for $280 in savings at seekdharma.com slash journeys with Josephine. This podcast was brought to you by Sana Skin Studio. Be sure to use my code, the no glow for $25 off of your first facial at Sana when booking via sanaskinstudio.com. More than a skin studio, Sana is a movement towards healthier skin and self-love. Thank you so much for listening to The No. If you loved this episode, go ahead and share it with a friend. Words are so powerful and someone may need to hear what we covered today. And if you really loved this episode, please take a moment to rate the show and leave a review. Your comments are so important and valued and they give other listeners insight on what to expect on The Know. You can connect with me personally via Instagram at Nikki Sap Spo and The Know with Nikki Spo. My hope for you today is that you are fearless in looking inward so that you can be your highest, most authentic self and go after the life of your dreams. Mm -hmm.